Hey everybody, this is A7X Fan Ben, and this is vlog number 42 of Pirates with Ben. So this one's going to probably be kind of a long episode. You might notice from the tap count, uh, there's a lot of pictures up. Uh, anyway, I'll get to that later. So on the Pirates forum, some good stuff going on. Uh, as I start recording this, uh, a few more replies have come in uh, on the forum from Xerix, which is why you see the orange uh, uh, threads. So I can't wait to look at them. Uh, Xerox has a new Century of Economy report up, and uh, Custom Ships 2 has been hot and active as usual. So there's been some new customs posted today, including some by myself. I actually have um, a piece of paper here with something i got to put into my Epic Seas spreadsheet. So good stuff going on. Uh, God Mason has a new 16-point uh, ranking thread up for 16-point ships. And... One of the more interesting things I've seen this year in general, um, I have to credit Irish Bandit 89 for coming up with this thread where he's uh, inquiring about Tabletop Simulator, which is a, it's basically a computer program, kind of similar to Vassal in a way where you can play board games in like a 3D um, environment. And uh, it's basically, yeah, Tabletop Simulator, the name gives you the idea of what it is. And I, I haven't used it or bought it or downloaded it or anything, but, um, been wondered a few times in the past if there was a pirates, you know, module or whatever, kind of like on Vassal or like a uh, a version of it for pirates. And last night I just double checked and I had checked in the past, um, but apparently not since last September because there is one now. So on Steam you can find. I googled it and first I found like a Reddit thread and then I found this. So um, Judge or Not made a pirates version. Uh, for tabletop simulator, which is awesome, although it's it's uh, it looks a little different. You can see there's hex hex based islands. It looks like, and uh, it might look a bit different than pirates as we know it, um, as compared to Vassal in the re regular physical game, um, which is normal and fine. It does say concept very much still a work in progress, but base game is playable. So. And I also see some stuff on the right. I'm not really sure how much it pertains to pirates. There's some stuff that's uh, that I don't recognize as much in terms of rules, but it looks it actually looks cool though because it looks a more detailed than the regular game. So if you already have Tabletop Simulator, I'd highly recommend checking this out. I'm gonna put a link in the description below, and uh, if, if you try it, let me know how it goes. I'm not sure. I'm going to buy Tabletop Simulator unless I know somebody else is interested in playing pirate this version of Pirates on it. Um, but it's a huge thing going forward and a topic I'm super interested in. I still would love to edit the Vassal module more. It just requires a decent amount of time and effort. And, uh, you know, adding like sea creatures, for example, the graphics in our work, that's kind of where things get bogged down to. Um, or they can at least. And of course, I'm not the biggest fan of sea creatures, so I'd rather play a campaign game a lot of times. But uh, but anyway, just to get back on topic, I could see this being a huge thing going forward. Whether it's this, uh, you know, module or whatever on Tabletop Simulator or another one that somebody else creates. Um, like I said, I haven't used it yet, but but just something I, I have to mention. I might mention it in the future again, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get more clarity on it as time goes along. But apparently it, it says it was released, uh, posted September of 2017 which is when I was starting to get all crazy with Command of the Oceans. <laughs> so no, no, no wonder I didn't know about it. But but yeah, so thanks to Irish Panda 89 for coming up with the thread, because then I Googled it, and uh, at first I didn't find anything, and then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, this is this is like big news, honestly. This is a big, this is kind of a big deal. So that being said, I'm not sure. I mean, the Hex Islands is a little funky, and uh, it says uh, a work in progress, so I don't know what it's like exactly. But anyway... Pretty interesting. And then apparently there's an RPG. The RPG is on Tabletop Simulator as well, which I haven't played that, but I know Captain Vendari raves about it. And uh, and anyway, so, and that's in the thread too. But All right, so features, uh, deals of the day. I've got a couple from Soda Pop Ninja 3 on eBay, 100% positive feedback. These are a couple of auctions with Buy It Now as an option. These two have no bids. I featured, I believe I featured the Revolution lot as the deal of the day pretty recently over the weekend. And now we've got a couple Crimson Coast lots up. So this first one is the larger one. It says over 40 ships and forts. 
right now starting bid at forty dollars and around six dollars shipping is what it's showing for me but i i wanted to point this out because a dollar ship not bad crimson coast has become more uh rare i guess and definitely more expensive over the past three to four years and beyond that it's a really good set so i'm zooming in here eagle cassandra treasure adventure royal james bonnie liz london goliath uh rover amity just so many good ships and that's just the first picture and then you get the, the ships on the next page um and then some uts and then there's four there's looks like five forts some good some good and very useful named crew in here so i think it's a really practical lot and a good one and Price have been a little higher, not so much the past few weeks, but a uh, dollar a ship in general is pretty solid, especially for Crimson Coast. And then there's a smaller lot, which says 15 is the starting bid, about four shipping, over 20 ships in forts, and once again, good quality stuff. Cumberland, Alexandra, Cassandra, Gibraltar, Amity, those are all good gold or hybrid ships. Uh, San Salvador, Adventure Sultan, so many good ships in here. I mean, you can see how good of a, of a set Crimson Coast is. And, uh, oh, and the first picture actually has even better ones. I see the Dauphine Royale, Artesian, Bonnie Liz, Tritone, one of my favorite friendships. So, pretty good deals a day. You can find links to those in the description below. And I'll get on to the next feature, which is the card of the day. So, sets number 1 through 14. I know number 6 is Davy Jones' Curse. This came out in 2006, introduced the Cursed Faction in the Sea Creatures. It numbers to 300. Uh, let's see if we get the Guichuan. 300, probably not. 115, um, let me guess. I don't know, I feel like it's a generic crew though. Okay, yeah, Musketeer. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've done this or not. I should keep better track of this. I don't think I have. I'll just talk about it quickly. Uh, the Cursed, get a Musketeer, Davy Jones Curse, their first Musketeer. So they get unique artwork. They were the feature faction of that set. Looks like a, you know, an undead zombie or something. I've never, I don't know if I have a musketeer from this set. I might, but anyway, musketeers to me are a bit overpriced. It's you basically pay three points to get an extra three S cannon. Cannot have its ranger cannon roll increased, which means you can't uh, like buff it, uh, as I've heard God Mason say with like a world hater. So you can't make it a two S. And it can shoot from any mast, even in an eliminated mast. So that is pretty cool. So you can shoot, uh, choose where it comes from, the shot comes from. Overall, I think Musketeers could have been two points. Cannoneers give you the ability to reshoot a cannon for two points. And that's usually all you need. So Musketeers feel a little, little too pricey for what you get. And I have a long and uh, ugly history with 3S cannons. I kind of overrate it at this point. It's kind of mellowed out. The law of averages has kind of made it a little less extreme, but in a lot of the games I played when I was getting started with all this obsession, like 2011 to 2013, 3S cannons were a disaster. I just rolled ones, twos, and threes on them all the time. So on a cannon you would expect to have 50% success rate on, I probably, it, especially in those years, I would estimate that my success rate was well under 40% on hits, maybe like a third. Um, it was it was disastrous. So including some notable Ten Master and HMS Grand Temple failures. But anyway, um, so it's kind of it's, it's like a weird like trauma thing from my pirates past. Um, but anyway, it's mellowed out a bit. I would say Musketeers are too pricey though. Um, game piece rating out of ten, I would give them. I mean, this is a big generic crew, probably six out of ten. I mean, it's not a bad crew at all, and it's a solid option. I wouldn't go above 6 out of 10, though, because Musketeers, I'd probably give, like, 6.5 out of 10, also very optional. Um, Musketeers are probably something you're not going to use much in a 40-point game. They're not very, they're not what I would call, like, a competitive crew. So for 3 points, you're going to get a Captain, you're going to get a Helmsman and Oarsman. And even if all your ships are already equipped with what they need in terms of crew, those 3 points are often better spent on, like, extra Oarsmen, as lame as it might sound, or... Um, like a sack crew or SAT, same action twice, just adding extra stuff to your fleet. Uh, I mean, technically, you can get the best ship in the game, Banshee's Cry, for three points. So, Musketeers, I see as kind of like a just an extra firepower option, especially in larger games when the points become less of an issue, like 100 plus points or campaign games. 
and you can kind of play with your gunship setups. So Musketeers are decent for gunships, and uh, they're okay, but, and if I remember, I'm going to actually put a link to Wolf's Cannoneer vs. Musketeer miniature review, because it's extremely interesting, and really, he really goes into extreme detail on the differences and, like, which one you should use based on which ship you're using and stuff like that. So Musketeers, I think they're a little better, I guess, on smaller gunships, because they add a higher percentage of firepower to the ship, so... Almost like broadside attack in a, in a way, or at least in terms of how I think about it. So, anyway, so Musketeer is maybe 6 out of 10. Hopefully I haven't done that card of the day already, or at least that crew. So picture of the day is going to be a long one here. Uh, so Economy Edition, I looked in my folder and searched by date, date taken on June 21st, 2015. Um, the pictures, there were around 100 pictures taken, not that I saved them all, but there's dozens from this day. And you can find a link to Economy Edition in the in the description below. But I'll just go through them. I'm kind of retelling the story of the game a little bit in minor fashion on the blog and on Instagram a bit. Um, I'll try to link to my Instagram too. Actually, I think that's linked as a as a default link. But anyway, so here we can see the uh, the Franco Spanish have uh, reignited their war with the Americans. So you can see some submarines. Looks like the Duncan is getting rammed out of commission there. Um, and there's some Franco-Spanish large ships rounding that uh, trading port at the top of the picture. So a neat one, but it gets even better because on this day, three years ago today, the pirates executed one of the most brutal and biggest betrayals in the history of pirate CSG. So they had an alliance. So spoiler alert, if you haven't, I should have said that already, but if you haven't read the game already, uh, you might want to pause it and read all the Economy Edition battle reports. It's one of my best games I've ever played, and one of my best games in, ter in terms of battle reports as well. But um, it would take you many hours just to read it all. So the Pirates basically had an alliance with the Franco-Spanish, and they launched a home island raiding squadron, which they kind of, the Franco-Spanish kind of assumed they were going to take that to the Americans. But the Pirates sailed north, and instead of continuing on east, they went straight to the Franco-Spanish home island, and here the White Rose executed the blind side with, uh, uh, by shooting at the Buscador, and that triggered a huge betrayal. So there's a bunch of pictures I've selected here from this day. So the White Rose and the Akualapu um, started raiding the home island. I think the Akualapu had Grim the Savage board, which lets you take as many treasures you can carry. So it was a huge blindside, huge betrayal, and here you can start to see the scale. So the Franco-Spanish had a bunch of cargo ships. Those are not warships at the at the upper part of the picture here. Those are just cargo ships, pretty much. So they were easy picking for these pirate hybrid home island raiders. So the pirates had a bunch of home island raiding ships and crew um, in a big, big squadron, and uh, but a lot of, almost all of them had captains and helmsmen too, so they were able to, able to smash the their former allies really hard, really quickly, especially because it was a total betrayal, so they pretty much automatically had the first shot in all their, you know, skirmishes and ship-to-ship -ship battles in the area. And then here, a little continuation of a recent picture of the day, you can see the four Krakens, um, I guess, swimming out instead of sailing out, and the Franco-Spanish have a squadron going alongside the, the southern side of the lagoon where the pirates have dominated it due to Calypso's whirlpools and they're taking the pirates are taking some gold off that island in the lagoon here's a bright picture showing the american english war so you can see there's all sorts of stuff going on like almost every picture so far has been like a totally different a different thing and a different area of the of the map and whatnot so one of my favorite games definitely the americans have kind of encircled the English home island, and they pretty much were able to blockade them and start picking off their ships. So this one shows Chao Bala attacking Le Loup Garou. So it was a French, this is a French uh, ship that's not a very good ship, but she was kind of playing like a weird, like logistical, like speed logistics role. And, uh, but Chao Bala got to her and obviously uh, hit her pretty hard. So I like this picture because it shows not Shalbala's view, but almost kind of like a view of, like, if Shalbala was, like, descending, what you would kind of see. So, it's kind of a unique angle. It almost looks like Shalbala is, like, like reaching her head to the side to try to, like, like eat the, eat, like, the boom or the, 
the jib or whatever of the foremast of the the Lelu Garou. And uh, it's just kind of a cool picture. I'd like to try to get certain angles like this, kind of like action shots or action angles. And then here, probably should have taken the flash for this one, but it shows kind of like the dark nature of the curse. You can see the Shaobala wings in shadow. And for dramatic effect, the infantry unit was placed on the ship and then knocked over to show um, the death and carnage caused by the evil sea dragon. And here I started taking pictures of uh, the carnage just because I wanted to show like what what went down on that turn, like literally went under the waves. So these were the ships that were sunk on that turn. And then I played another turn. And then you can see a military port was destroyed, it looks like. Franco-Spanish one, some crew killed in action. And then here's the Franco-Spanish deck plate area, which you can see the holes. Those are some of the ships that have sunk recently. So I can see, you know, probably 10 or more deck plates already gone from their area. So anyway, more on that soon or in a later vlog, probably. And the English had a weird thing where they had to spend what little resources they had. And they got some small, um, some small gunships to help them out. And here you can see some of their gold runners actually trying to save off elimination at the hands of the Americans. But of course it was pretty futile and you can see the Kettering looming off to the left there, one of the best gunships in the game. Here we can see the San Esteban returning home. So if you remember from another vlog, San Esteban was wicked lucky in this game. She shot about eight for nine with only rank three cannons and managed to be the only Frango Spanish ship to eventually escape the uh, cursed wrath at the hands of one of their sea monster squadrons. And she made it all the way back to the Rango Spanish home island, pretty much, but just in time to see this devastating raid, which broke the hearts of the Franco Spanish and also broke their their backs in the game, um, as you can see in the report. Here, Shaobala has uh, totally ripped apart uh, Lu Garou and just ripped the ship to shreds and sunk it. So this is one of my. It's not super high quality, but one of my favorite like up close shots from this game in particular. This one is a lot more clear. Um, this is actually the Zanfu, not the Shui Zhan. It's a proxy for the Return to Savage Shores 10 Master that the Americans launched. And she was almost used as like a big gunship like block to help. You can see in the, on the left, the canoes and the American resource system is ferrying resources from islands. So she was used almost like as a big block ship to stop the uh, Franco Spanish from getting from getting at the, at the resource system. But she had good support. You can see the Overton. And it looks like USS Thomas Jefferson are, are starting to penetrate the uh, Franco-Spanish uh, waters there. And then that one's the same, it looks like. And this one, this is the graveyard for this turn or whatever, one of the turns of this day, three years ago today. You can see a ton of ships were sunk, even some of the ones we saw in some of the pictures just now. So just a really devastating day. So there's pretty much all-out war. The Americans and English were all-out war. Franco-Spanish and Americans conflict, the pirates' betrayal of the Franco-Spanish, and uh, the cursed attacking the Franco-Spanish. So Franco-Spanish uh, really had a rough time here uh, towards the end of their run in this game. And here's a zoomed out picture showing a lot of the gameplay in the map. So one of my favorites, definitely. I love pictures like this that really give you like the big, the big picture of what's going on in the game and like the grand epic nature of it. So here's another one looking. Uh, out of the east towards the west, you can see Shaldala kind of towards the lagoon there. Um, it's kind of hard to make out some of the stuff that's going on in the background. Mostly shows English, American, and uh, cursed waters, but there's a ton of points concentrated at the far end of that photo, as we saw earlier. This one is a really cool one showing the American encirclement of the uh, English home island here. You can really see how, how much of a total victory it was. The English only have, looks like, two or three or four ships uh, sailing at this point. So they were on the brink of elimination here. I like this one because it shows a lot of the sails and kind of the red, white, and blue and uh, black. In the case of the Black Watch, different sail colors of the, the nice-looking uh, American ships. So that's pretty much all the picture of the day. There's more in the report, as you can, uh, as you can see, if you want to read about it. Check out the links in the description. I'll link to the, the tabletop simulator version, which is really interesting, especially for the future. Deals of the day, of course. Uh, Musketeers, kind of meh, but anyway, so Economy Edition. 
And uh, check out Xerox's uh, Century of Economy second report for that game. So uh, leave a like, uh, subscribe if you want to see more Pirates content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.